welcome to another video guys not going to be on this four-door chrysler but this 1967 cadillac convertible i don't know if it's known as a deville convertible two-door soft top and you see she's gonna need some attention uh, so the plan today is drag it out see if we can get motor running and kind of do an assessment and then go from there uh, I'm told this has been sitting for, he said 20 years, uh, but here only uh, only maybe four or five years. And then before that, he bought it not running. So he really doesn't know how long it's been. He, he's told by two owners ago, said it, it ran fine. So check out the body lines on this, guys. These things are just beautiful. Uh, let's sweep down, do a quick exterior tour. All right, okay, so it couldn't have been too long. I'm seeing PS 850s on here. Prime wells. I don't think they've been out for 20 years. I could be wrong. Oh, it's uh it's looking all together though. All complete. And so this is actually a friend of mine uh scooping this. I'm gonna grab it for him and then kind of do a video on it. I'll chill you out this morning. But, uh, oh, alright, so she's a little bare inside. No seats. Some holes in the floor, looking pretty rough. We'll we'll go back to the interior later in this video. I uh, just figured I'd do a quick sweep around tour before we go moving it. Oh yeah, I think she'll clean up nice actually. Got the wing windows, love it. So we're gonna get these couple cars moved and then we'll, we'll get her on out of here. All right, he's gonna fire this thing up. We just threw a battery in it. It's got. V6 out of, I'm not sure, but somebody did a modern swap. The Chrysler Windsor. I'm cranking good anyway. Yeah, you know, fuel cell in the trunk. Let me give it a little quick crank. Yeah, go ahead. Hear the pump going. Pull it up closer to the trees so you can get Behind your trail. Yeah, so you can get your trail. Check out the crank window crank handle oh, yeah, on that. that. Very Scott, cool. It folds up. Look at that. These uh, iridescent looking clear plastic bezels. Oh, it's got this little like king thing here too. How about that? Oh, it's got the suicide doors. Look at that boom box, baby. Why do all these old Chrysler's have big, big subwoofers in them? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, my guy had had one too. Play Biggie Smalls or Dupont for your crew. Biggie Small. Oh yeah, factory air cleaners. Yeah, newer master cylinder on there. This looks like it has ran in the last five, five, ten years. For it's got prime well tires on there too. So, what are you gonna hit with some star food? Uh, I want to do this. Oh, <laughs> want to get that all greased up because it wasn't really working all that good. And then if they get locked, boom, you're just gonna struggle with ever trying to open one of these things up again. Absolutely. So get some lubrication in here. Tiny little port for the intake. <laughs> Like an inch. So this is the 429, you said? Yeah, it's a 429. Gotcha. Get some. You like these more than the 472, or? No, 472 is much, much better engine. 68 was the first year for the 472, and just a, a bulletproof, great running engine, and they continue that for a few years. It was really nice. Factory air conditioning. Not much else going on, but it is com it is complete. It's got the. Uh, the windshield washer reservoir cruise control, which is uh, which is a pretty interesting option. Perfect circle. Yeah. So it's it's kind of a, a loaded up uh, '67. I'm surprised these even came without air on them. You would think all yeah. Cadillacs would, well, would have air. I guess the idea back in the day was well, it's got it's a convertible, so we don't need air conditioning. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Unless you're driving through Death Valley, it's 120. <laughs> but of course, in, in South Jersey, when it's oh, nice and tight. humid That's in the summertime, one. it's gonna be a little lube. Oh yeah. You know, South Jersey in the summertime is like uh, Vietnam. Yeah. You know, radiators down about six inches, bunch of corrosion up at the top. Yeah. I'm not expecting too much. No, I, I think she's gonna be a running driver for sure with, with minimal effort. Well, and that would be a plus because I have. Power steering's bone dry. I've got a brand new grill, a good front bumper, and a, and a, a real nice rear bumper. Cool. This grill's actually in pretty decent shape, too, huh? Yeah, these things. I've got these. Oh, okay. I've got these used gotcha. too, and then I've got a, a, a new grill. I don't know if I'm going to put a new one stock grill on this. Let's see what the oil level's at. Yeah. Nice dark right in between the lines. That's what we like to see. Mike's getting his workout just, for the morning. Yeah, it's just it's just like lifting weights. Looks like someone did stainless steel brake lines on this, which is nice. Somebody cared. I, you never see stainless brake lines. Wow, that they're, is they're unusual. So, yeah, they're really That's hard really to bend. Unusual. Yeah, th yes, I know. What you find over there? Uh, somebody's painted over the the tag. I can't read it, so I'm gonna try to see if I can't. Uh, as he's over there fiddling with the VIN tag, I just realized I forgot the winch. I took it off. Oh, I left it in the back of my Ram, and I don't have a come along with me. But, you know what? Luckily, the front winch on this truck is mounted on a two-inch receiver. So I can take that off there and put it on the trailer. I knew I did that for a reason when we put this on. My buddy's like, why don't you just mount the winch in there? I'm like, ah, it seems to make sense to be able to use it for other stuff, too. Forgetful me. Have you got a, a scrunch pad or a little piece of sandpaper? What about some sandpaper, Sid? Sandpaper, a little piece of, of scrunch pad. Or... Wow, man. You threw your setup. Thanks. Boom. That'll work too. I got everything except the winch that was supposed to be on the trailer. <laughs> a pin is under the hood, so it'd be a little bit harder to steal. This winch, but that also makes it harder getting off of here because it's tight back there. Yeah, all greased up too. Oh, I gotta take the cables off. Oh, you see the problem? <laughs> see what I see? I welded that on there for this. Mm, I see that. <laughs> Who'd have thought that would ever be an issue? That'll do it. I was able to jam her in there a scotch and then chain it down. That should be enough to pull, pull the car on. Nice mosquito peppers. Oh yeah. Anyway, let's get the closer where it's gotta go. Now we're gonna get this top off uh, now because we don't want it blowing off on the road once we pull all the way up, can't open the door. Is this the factory top? Okay. No, no, oh no. There's no factory top. Oh, that definitely is not factory top, but it is interesting. There we go. Nice little swimming pool here. Mosquito hatchery.
that should be cool. Just enough. home safe it's starting to drizzle a touch and you see that was really squat in the tundra with a ton of tongue weight but had to pull it up that far because how long it was eventually looking to get a tilt deck at some point but this trailer has been just great to me uh, a lot of people comment all the time like why do i use the tundra instead of the the cummins ram over there i i just love the way this truck drives i mean i, don't know, I love pushing it to the limit recently added these little uh, silicone strips here check it out i, I took the the uh, screen out now you can reach in and grab stuff conveniently how about it um but yeah at some point probably upgrade this truck the motor really i uh, could use a nice torquey four-cylinder diesel in there had to put some cardboard here because she was bouncing up and down a little bit didn't want to damage the fender come check this thing out is it a convertible oh yeah we're gonna be rolling in style we'll see if jen and gus approve of the new rig at the property oh boy we're getting rid of one i got a parking spot for the trailer so what do you think, Gus? What? First impressions? It's automatic. So, okay. you like that and cruising it. Last inspected 1991. Oh, baby. Oh, well, that doesn't matter. The old heavy metal didn't even put a scratch in it. That's another nice thing. I'd like to get a trailer that has remo removable fenders or maybe even a deck over. But yeah, pretty sweet, right? Yeah. Come on, boy. Come on. Okay, well, let's get this thing cleaned up a little bit and off the trailer. As I was just saying, I have a parking spot for this trailer now, so I don't have to play Tetris in the yard with it anymore. This has obviously been repainted. It's a bunch of cracking on it too. The original color, you can see on the inside of the door, it's like a bluish teal or so. I'll have to look up what one of these might have looked like off the showroom floor in better condition. So far no keys on this one, but I can't wait to see what's inside of this trunk. I'd also like to clean the gutter out real good. honest it might have looked a little bit better before we pressure washed it looking more like a old rusty cast iron tub now with the porcelain cracking and rust coming out it's uh it's not good looking it's not a good patina let's put it that way <laughs> i mean uh, you can see some some old 
patch stuff coming off. That's what it looks like anyway. And of course, we didn't even give it a scrub yet, but this paint is just a lost cause. There's, there's no bringing it back. It's uh, super cracky all over the place. I guess let's get her off the trailer now. I see the tank strap has come down. Uh, there's no tank straps at all. Going, boy, you got a new place to put the trailer, huh? You don't have to keep it in the yard no more. Go for a car ride. I got a really sweet parking spot, only a few blocks from my house, and this alleviates a lot of stress from getting it in and out of my backyard. Good stuff. Hey Gus, what are you doing up on that chair? Come out here and find you there? If we catch you on that table, boy. I, I, don't you even think about it. Get down. Sit. Down. Jump through. All right, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. Next day, the rain has stopped a little bit. Uh, sun's starting to kind of come out. Let's see if we can get this engine fired up. Maybe clean out the interior, do an assessment on the floor. I didn't bother covering this because it was already full of water and all the dash was covered by the window. So. You see this guy was a supporter of the state police. Got a pretty decent looking Quadra jet on it. Spray up the linkages a little bit. Nothing seized up though. Except for maybe this pump right, it's got a bunch of rust on it, on the shaft. Actually the throttle is seized up, but I bet you it's just the pedal or the fact it's, well, no, it's not the cruise control. Let's go ahead and pop it off there. Yeah, it's the carb seized up, pedal's fine. So I'm just going to give her a good hose for now, and I'm going to pull the, the plugs out, drop some oil down there, and then we'll hand rotate the engine over. Yeah, yeah, she's a little crusty in there, for sure. I'm pretty clean looking down the, the primaries, but the secondaries, it's another story. And you see that's probably why the linkage is seized up. So I'm actually going to get in there, scrape some of that, and try to vacuum it out, and then, then spray lube. I actually have one of these Quadra jets sitting on the shelf too, but that one probably needs a cleaning anyway. So we'll see if it fires up with this guy first. I mean, I really should just pop the screws out and see what it looks like inside, but yeah, it's always fun to throw fuel at it first because a lot of time they work just fine. Let's go ahead and give her the old fan budge, see if it's locked up or not. Nope. Alright, so just to be safe, since this is a pretty clean looking engine, I'm gonna pull the plugs out now. He's really not tight at all. Which leads me to believe they have crush washer type. It's usually, uh, you know, people often don't tighten those down enough. Where's the taper ones? Those get stuck on pretty good. Yep, yeah, crush washer was never crushed 
very much, but these are very new, good looking plugs. Bosch Super Plus. Looks like it was never ran with these, actually. I'll show you once I get them all out. Oh, never mind. This one definitely ran with it. So that must have just been really lean. One of the easier V8s to access spark plugs. Plenty of room in here. Here's a glance at plugs one through seven, and over on the driver's side, two through eight. You can tell this definitely had some running issues, but nothing wrong with these plugs as far as I can see. It's got that split fire tip. Made in Brazil. Shoot some lube in each of the cylinders. And also gonna pour a little motor oil in here. This was a touch low on the stick, and also Mike, who's the guy you guys saw when we picked it up. He's pretty knowledgeable with these. He was saying this will go down and get, I guess, into the oil pump gears a little bit. I don't see how it really hit the gears going down the cover, but I don't know. Maybe I can put a picture up of what he's talking about. He was saying the the gears inside of there work into the case or something like that. Pouring some oil down here will help out. Almost ready to give her a little crank over. And, uh, let's check the trans fluid. That's nice and red, up to level, beyond up to level, which is good. And I guess we'll start by just hand rotating her over. Listen to it. Don't even have to get down there on a wrench. And it's 360 degrees and 720. She feels good. I've got the front jacked up and ran a wire down to the starter so we can get it cranking over. Once again, I don't have that key, but you see these shocks are newer. Got some HD 500s in it by, what does that say, Delco? You see drum brakes on the front, newer brake hoses. And let's check the DOTs while we're down here. They weren't on the outside when I looked. Here we go, 33 2006. So that's less than 20 years ago. This was definitely on the road driving. Well, I suppose somebody could have always just put tires on it for moving it around, but I'm sure she was cruising. So 17 years ago. We'll drop the Duralast Marine starting battery and we'll do this first crank with the plugs out. Uh, by the way, does anybody know why these Marine starting batteries are so much cheaper than a, a standard automobile starting battery? Like the 24F, which is equivalent of this, same size for my Tundra, is like over double the price, $230, and this one was only $99. I put one of these in the El Camino when we were in Arizona, didn't have any problems driving home. Uh, maybe they don't do as well and in the cold weather but it is a thousand cold cranky amps and that's what it measured out when i tested it on my tool i really don't know why they're cheaper it's, it's kind of nice having the extra post on here too for putting accessories onto the thread but anyway here goes the crank get the wire hooked up down the starter all right uh, i'm not getting i'm not even getting a spark on here uh, they ran a thicker primary wire down to the starter with a better connection still no spark so it's probably just this rusty terminal i'd imagine in fact, easy test for that. Let's hook this jumper wire up. Just touching this real quick to ground. You see how it starts smoking? That connection in there is terrible, so we're getting a ton of voltage drop. Put it on the stud. And now we should probably check the ground connection at the frame too, but Still not getting anything. Big hole drum brakes. It's like the size of a uh, drum brakes in a truck. After giving the starter solenoid some shock therapy, got her cranking, so here's a listen to that. We'll let it go for a little bit, build up some oil pressure. All right, now let's check for some spark, which I assume we won't have since this has points. Well, this ignition coil, positive side's over here. Is that side's coming off the points? And I got 12 volts, not getting any arc on the positive side, but that's okay. It might just be that the points gaps open right now. I'll take the high tension lead off, 
put that on ground and we'll crank her over. Should have, well, probably won't have spark, but let's find out. Nothing. Disconnect that power. And now we just check uh, the points, which yeah, you should always do to begin with. But I, I like to display, as I always say, uh, show the failure, failures, simple or complicated. And that way you can see, uh, I mean, if it had spark, I wouldn't even be taking this off. All right, under the cap, looking pretty fresh. No corrosion or anything. The uh, rotor looks good. String tension on there. If you guys watch the channel, you've seen me do this a million times already. The centrifugal vents, it's lubricated and flies out. The cam is good condition. In, you see a little corrosion in the little pitting in the, those points. I like to use sandpaper, but on this style points, it's hard to get the sandpaper in there. So a file works better. Got those cleaned up. Let's see if we're making contact. I don't always do the proper way of setting these points, but I can tell you that gap is insanely huge. Looks a little better. Before putting the cap back on, I'm gonna put the test light on here. And I have the other end on positive, so we should have pulsing red light. Uh, we don't. So that's not good. Not gonna get spark unless we have that pulsing light. Well, I'm sorry, I still have the coil hooked up without power going to it, so let's just, that's probably where it's getting that, that ground from. Should have no ground now. All right, no ground. And hopefully you guys can see the test light. Go. You see, it wasn't steady there for a second. Now we got it. Good lights. Yeah, you know, I think that's enough to get spark anyway. Oh, now we get some arcage at the uh, positive side of the coil. That's good. It means our primary windings or should be good. Okay, good spark. Oh, oh man, it got me. <laughs> Spark still built up in the secondary side, I guess, huh? My fault anyway. That's a good way to burn the coil up. Next step is going to be sending some fuel to the carburetor. Well, no fuel has come up from the tank with the crank in. You can see the fuel. At least that looks empty. It's got a glass bowl. I really like that. Uh, so we'll take it off here and then just... When we start it, we'll see if anything comes up from the tank. It's got a mechanical pump mounted down on the block right there. There it goes. See what the filter looks like. Yeah, it's got a screen and it's in good shape. We've got the jug hooked up with a two-stroke mix, the carb, and then the hose coming off the filter into this jug. Our level starting right here. Well, let's go ahead and turn this on and see if the carb takes anything. I can hear it going in. I'm also going to give the carb a little whack. Oh, my connection's leaking here uh, to help the float along if it's stuck. I took gas and the level stopped, so that means the float should be sealing pretty good. We got two fire extinguishers handy, and I want to top this power steering off a little bit too, in case that's bone dry. It took about a half quart. The carburetor linkage is still locked up, but that's not going to prevent us from starting if those jets are uh, decently clean enough. Let's do a little shot of ether, see what she does. Decent crank. Sounds a little uneven there. Yeah! A little noisy. Sounds like pretty good though, some misfiring. The lifters are a little noisy, but we give them some time to pump up. We're definitely not running the back. Definitely not running number seven based on the temperature. But we're getting good spark there. 
and you see nothing changes when I pull that off. Doesn't change at all. I'm gonna look through the firing order now. Yeah, firing order looks to be right. So I'm still having a problem with number seven misfiring, and I just swapped in a different plug, but I'm gonna do a, a compression test on that cylinder now. Yeah, we're good. 120. And I didn't even have the throttle blade open. Set this points gap. This thing's running really good though. You hear the valve trains quieted down. I'm I'm shocked. It's misfired anymore. I think it's hitting that number seven. Still a little do to do, do, but it's running much better. Now we gotta just get this carb free. I want to force it after a touch of heat, bunch of lube, some vibration, and more. I got uh, the primary side working. It won't rebound on its own, but uh, I did get the secondary side open once too. But that's still really tight. Well, let's uh, start this up again. Oh, might be stuck open a touch. It should be all the way back. Let's see what she does when we go into gear. Nothing so far, but I'm gonna run it through the gears and then recheck the trans fluid. Took four quarts to get it back on the stick. Let's see how it is now. Oh yeah, felt it going in reverse. She moves. I do have some belt chirping and a little rattling. I think it might just be the alternator though. I get this trunk open. I got a set of jiggler keys. Shoot some lube in here. Sounds like a lot of tumblers in there. Ooh, all this junk came out though. I gotta say one thing that's convenient about this is when you flip it up, it has this little detent to keep that out of your way. So when you put your key in, and it's not in the way. Yeah, no luck. I guess I could probably just go into the trunk. Oh, yeah, look at that. Plenty of access. Yeah, it's a brake shoes. There we go. Yes. Still gonna have to unbolt the latch to get it open. Well, there's a look. Mostly all junk stuff. You got some shoes that have rusted and separated. Or master cylinder. Some springs. A uh, condenser. Got the spare tire. Some rims that are uh, junk. And uh, another master cylinder. Yeah. Doesn't look like much of anything good in here. Well, that held up good. Got the bumper jack though. Oh yeah. And as for this latch, all I did was stick a pry bar in there, do that, but it was still stuck, because you see. So I, if I would have uh, looked closer, the trunk is so long, it's hard to even see all the way back here. 
But if I would have just taken a screwdriver, then it would have opened up. With this cover off though, you can see the only reason I was able to do that and pre-wheel it is because it has the electronic pop. I took that out of the equation. This will not spin without the tumbler having a key in it. Anything Cadillac related I'm putting aside. Got most all the door parts back here. Hood spring. These are brand new hood springs actually. Well this one is anyway. I don't know about the other but I got that. Brand spanking new. Wow that's heavy duty. We'll call that good enough for now. Really not too bad in here. I was hoping maybe find some more goodies, but didn't. You see this gas tank is being held up by the fill, which this uh, hose clamp is, is broken. It's just kind of teed in there. Probably push it right off. Yep, there it goes. Got everything of potential value back in the trunk, including this tire. I was thinking it could be a real lifesaver for somebody, you know, in the middle of nowhere. And then I look on the side of it, and it literally is a lifesaver tire by BF Goodrich, how about that? Uh, these, these gutters, clean those out and surprisingly not all rotted in there, along with the trunk lid. Some rust holes over on this side, but not too terrible. I put this overly complicated latch back into the recess position, which I'm thinking maybe that has another solenoid in there and that kicks, that's what kicks the trunk lid up when you open it. Too, so solenoid up there, well motor, and then solenoid, I don't know. But let's see if this wants a latch. We know how to open it now. Right, there we go. Good enough. Let's put the top down. I sprayed down all these hinges last night. So hopefully this thing folds down just fine. And now when I was vacuuming back here, I did find the original color of this car. And after looking up, this is Atlantis Blue. What I showed you on the door over there, that, that teal or turquoise, the door must have been replaced. You can see this door does not have that color. Actually, I can't tell, but this one doesn't even look like the Atlanta's blue. It looks different. Different color. Hold tight. Here's your interior tour uh, in a little bit more detail. You got the climate control up on the side here. Ooh, that still spins. Some good action on there. Let's uh, cover down here. This looks like oh, it's falling off. Maybe the ashtray broken. Pull down. There it goes. Dueling ashtrays with a center cigarette lighter. That that's classy right there. Each person's got their own ashtray. A uh, AM FM radio. The glove box. It doesn't want to open. And otherwise, not much going on in here. The gas pedal on, throttle on the carb is fully unseized and retracts on its own. I had a double spring to be able to do that. And here's this cover at the bottom. Brake pedal uh, actually feels really good. It's moving a little bit and, and I feel some pressure. Parking brake seized. Uh, yeah, let me get this cleaned out a little bit and then we'll, we'll go off for a cruise, I guess. Pedal came with it. It wasn't even tugging. There's no way to assess the damage without getting rid of all this. Still got to get a third one of these. They they lock in perfectly to the framing that was already on the airboat. And look at this, you don't even need screws or nothing. It just locks in there, good. Okay. And that 
might just work. Maybe have to bring it up a little bit, but it's feeling pretty good. Put some clamps on there. A few self taps. Can even recline. How about that? Yeah, I think that's actually a good height. Up here, I got some pipe hangers and straps. Should have something to be able to secure that uh, chair down. I think these kind of what clamps will do. Let's check out this brake fluid. Oh yeah, that's what I was hoping to see. Pretty decently clean and up to level. Not bad at all. I think those brakes are gonna work just fine. Did you bump your wiener on the step? Well, I've got the fuel system hooked up to the fire extinguisher tank, half full of gas. A fire extinguisher it's up to 7 psi pressurized and uh yeah i got some wiring up here let's fire this thing up take for a spin strap actually I'll tie up the front of the tank too all right feeling pretty confident here hopefully you guys can see a little something through this windshield i mean my head can just see right over it didn't check that differential fluid yet but man she's uh she's driving pretty good actually it's always nice when you to the pavement below you. And these brakes, I mean, these, these work incredible. Really lucked out with that. They're not sticking or anything either. <laughs> That's my view. You guys are looking down here. But, oh yeah. This thing is great. Except for all the dust and rust in my eyes. It's not bad. Oh, I should have cleaned the windshield. people's faces when you drive by them is just hilarious it's like it's one thing this this really belongs on a farm not public roads but of course it's fully insured and registered 
it just doesn't look like it belongs, you know. So people are like, what's going on with this thing? Well, that was a ton of fun cruising around. I put a few miles on it and I think she's got a ton of potential and is just begging to be put back on the road and get further work done. Uh, unfortunately, you know, no title, no keys, but this car is for sale and you could easily get a title. This has been off the road for a very long time. There's no, no uh, court BS or anything going on with it. Uh, so at this point, I'm gonna go underneath, give you guys a, a quick little tour and show you a little bit more of that for anybody who's actually interested. I mean, it looks like the rockers and these, these lower fenders were, and quarters were repaired at some point or another. I'm no expert in body work, but it looks like some Bondo and such. Here's a closer look. And I mean, frame wise, come on. This thing is like tight, guys. No rot that I can see on the frame so far. Hopefully I'll be able to get you guys a few more. Uh, sorry about dragging this thing on the ground, a few more. Oh yeah, it's got a double card in. Cardone, Cardone joint on the back. The uh, differentials leaking some. It's got the third member style. Newer brake hose and there's a stainless steel brake line in the back. Double joint up on the front. No leaking out of the tail shaft. And I imagine all that ATF that leaked out was just from the pan. This looks like it got hot at some point. It's all kind of melted. And a newer exhaust on it. You know, it's got the Y pipe going into single but it's definitely not factory now look at the passenger side of the frame going up to the steering there's the idler arm all that in pretty good shape hopefully this camera oh, sorry if i'm shaking around a bunch guys trying to crawl around under here looks like somebody replaced one of the steel lines with a rubber one and then the other is still steel line pretty rusted going toward the back over on the driver's side you can see more stainless steel brake lines. These are made by, I'm not sure, but you know, it's just nice to see that. You don't ever have to think about it again. So anyway, hopefully that gives you a good idea of what's going on down here. And now let's get this over to another storage location. Sounds good. <laughs> now both the doors are rattling. Yo, just shooting a quick outro on this video. I uh, realized I never did really shoot one, so sorry about the poor lighting, but this Cadillac is for sale. So if you're in the market for 1967 Cadillac convertible, $3,000 is what he wants to get for this car. Uh, I was originally in interested in maybe buying it, but you know, let's face it, I got so many projects that I already don't stay on top of. Uh, so yeah, this one's available. It's near Trenton, New Jersey. Uh, my email is in the about section of my YouTube channel page, so feel free to shoot me an email there if you're interested in buying it. Otherwise, thank you so much guys for tuning into these videos. I love dragging these old vehicles out, getting them running. Had a lot of fun cruising this one around. That'll wrap up the video. I'll end it with a few random clips, and I hope to see you in another one very soon. No nonsense, no hell, over out. Over here at the shop at the Tundra, the entire rotation. And then check out these, uh, these rotors were off the customer's car actually. Back in 2015, they, I uh, machined them down the 
1.093 and wrote the disc card on there. People are always saying, you can't hit rotors with Rust-Oleum, but that was just some green Rust-Oleum I had kicking around, and it's still holding up. That's it. Eight years later. It's crazy. These are, uh, enough. these were factory rotors off the guy's truck, and he wanted, you know, we replaced them with aftermarket, and I was like, I'm keeping those, because that's better metal. this truck when it was only a few years old too and uh, yeah, it's a shame to see that oh my what do we have here fat lazy cat on the bed huh come on boy come on oh there he is wake up that turbo wake him up Look at Turbo out there. He's such a good cat, he even guards the chickens for us. Turbo, what you doing? The multi billion dollar industry of narco trafficking is one of Mexico's biggest exports. The most powerful is the 